What's up everyone, welcome back to another What Size video. Today we're tackling the key to post-workout recovery, carbs and timing. Ever wondered if the timing of your carb intake post-workout really matters for recovery? Can a few hours really make a difference? Join me as I will dive deep into the essential yet overlooked aspect of muscle glycogen recovery. I will discuss the science behind muscle glycogen, its importance and how it can drastically impact your performance and training effectiveness. Ready? Alright, let's dive into the science. Before we start about glycogen, it's important to understand that the active muscle cells require constant energy supply. Our body stores quick, accessible energy as a molecule called adenosine triphosphate or ATP in short. ATP is mainly produced from two different sources, carbohydrates, carbs, or fat. For this video, we only focus on the energy derived from carbohydrates, which are nothing else than simply said sugar chains. The kind of sugar our body uses to produce ATP is called glucose. And here it all comes together again. Glycogen, the storage form of glucose in our body. So glycogen is nothing else than huge bundles or a huge a series of bundles of sugar chains. Ready to set free the glucose where we actually need it. The amount of glycogen in the entire body is around 600 grams. But it can vary depending on factors like body weight, diet, fitness level and certainly recent exercises. Our muscles take with approximately 500 grams the lead in glycogen storage followed by the liver which has around 100 grams of glycogen which makes it an equivalent of 2400 kilocalories. Now get this, even though muscle and liver glycogen make up only 4% of our total fuel reserves, they're the MVPs when it comes to high intensity workouts like for example we heavy crossfit or heavy weightlifting. In fact, the higher the intensity of our exercise, the more we rely on glycogen to provide energy. So to reach high quality and high intensity in our training sessions, you want to have as much glycogen available and that's absolutely key. At the same time, the higher the intensity and the longer the duration of the session, the more muscle glycogen storage is depleted and obviously needs to get refilled. So what is the best strategy to refuel your muscle glycogen storages? Sports nutritionists wildly agree that immediately after exercise our muscles have an increased ability to store glucose. In the first two to four hours post-workout, repeated intake of about 1 to 1.2 grams of carbohydrates per kilogram body weight per hour can be highly beneficial for a fast glycogen refilling. However, complete glycogen repletion may take nearly 24 hours, as even the maximal rate of glycogen reconstruction is limited and can only be maintained for, let's say, approximately 4 hours, before the rate slowly declines to about 50% of the maximum. It's crucial to note that the strategy aimed at enhancing glucose uptake isn't universally applicable to anyone or to everyone following a typical workout. This approach becomes essential when there's a specific need to rapidly and fully replenish muscle glycogen, such as prior to a competition or a critical training session where peak performance is really the goal. Also, athletes engaged in multiple workouts on the same day may find this strategy beneficial for a quick recovery in between. For the everyday athlete, we recommend consuming approximately 60 to 80 grams of carbohydrates right after the workout. Actually, for optimal glycogen recovery, it's more important to consume the right amount of carbohydrates that align with your activity level over, let's say, a 24-hour period, rather than overloading on the sugars in the initial hours after workout. As long as your total fuel needs are provided, you can choose your intake pattern based on, let's say, your convenience and your personal preference. But let's come back to the science part. The mechanism behind the increased glucose sensitivity in the muscle after exercise indeed is super interesting in my opinion. Responsible for this is the glucose transporter called GLUT4, which gets activated by the sugar sensing hormone insulin. Kind of makes sense. If blood sugar levels are increased after eating, Glucose transporters like GLUT4 needs to be activated to make sure the glucose gets removed from the blood. 
These transporters are like little tunnels to bring glucose from one side of the membrane of the outside of the cell to the other. According to a review on GLUT4, it turns out that not only insulin but also muscle contractions can activate GLUT4 independently. And the cellular mechanism is quite remarkable. To explain it in a simplified way, when at rest, little bubbles called vesicles contain a lot of GLUT4 on their membrane and they are located close to the muscle surface. When during exercise the muscles start to contract, the silently waiting GLUT4 get recruited to the surface and they can transport glucose to cover the current need of energy. Right after we stop our exercise, these transporters stick to where they are and they remain motivated to take up more glucose into the muscle to rebuild, for example, glycogen. But wait, there's more. Exercise not only makes GLUT4 work right away, but also induces the production of more GLUT4. This helps your body adapt to training and boost your performance in the longer run. All right, to sum it up, glucose, as we know, is a main fuel for moderate to high intensity exercise, and they provide energy in form of ATP. To optimize your performance, fully replenished muscle glycogen surges are, are key here. Through exercise-induced GLUT4 activity, glucose gets transported during the workout to provide or after workout to provide energy. The amount of muscle glycogen used depends on how intense your training session was. The GLUT4 activity stays elevated after the workout for let's say two to four hours and then gradually declines. In this time, the muscle glycogen storage recovers faster if the carbohydrates are consumed, that's key. Our recommendation for, let's say, everyday athletes is to consume around 60 to 80 grams of carbs right after workout and cover the total energy needs during that day. All right, that was it. In our first real video about nutrition, tell us how you liked it in the comments and which other topics you would be interested in that we can cover. Please leave a like and subscribe to this channel. This really helps us out to make the channel grow and to provide evidence-based information to the grand public. Stay fit, stay healthy, catch you in the next one. Ciao.